Welcome to another Sir James D. Tech video. Today I will be doing the review for the Galaxy GTX 465 1GB DirectX 11 video card. Okay, so everybody wanted to see the Galaxy 465 with the card wide open. And you can see there's eight memory chips on it. Now a 470 typically will have these two extras here. Well, not really extra, but there's typically 10 for a 470. There's usually 8 like is on this with a 465. And then a GTX 480 will usually have 12 of these. Now also remember on the GTX 480, these heat pipes, they had to come out the side. Remember when I had those? Because that sucker just has so much heat coming out of it. Yeah, you just attach that. And then there's 11 of these little screws just here, there, everywhere. Four of these that just attach, you know, around the corners. I've read up on people hard modding these in order to get more power, you know, to get the processor cores up from 352 to... 448 or 480 but since I don't recommend obviously doing that I'm not going to spend much time going over that. They sent the HDMI to mini HDMI 1.3a cable and a VGA to DVI adapter but once again they didn't send any power cables and as you've seen this card requires two six pin now it would have been nice for people that don't have enough PCI Express cables available directly from their power supply. Alright, here I'll demonstrate the flip fan. Now this does have blue LED, so it is actually a very nice looking fan. But in case you want to put your own on there, do whatever you want, you got to pinch these two together. Okay, pinch them together. See what I mean? And just take it out. And then when I had the card open, clearly you saw, hopefully, where it's plugged in. And then you just detach that, put in your own fan. But honestly, as I'll show you in the performance results, this is a very good fan and cooling system. And it's very reasonably quiet as well, even on 100%. There we have the card right in there. Now I am going to take the side panel off, but what I kind of wanted to do was give you a perspective that I've been having. See that blue LED in there is actually really nice. Now one thing I will say is I really wish this card was black. I mean, yes I love black coloring for all my components, all my cables, everything. But, because this is so plasticky, it, the gray just makes it look like a toy to the nth degree. And it makes it, you know, feel like a toy, obviously. But, just looking at the thing, if that was black, it would possibly cover it up a little bit. You know, you can kind of get away with it being that much plastic. And, I really don't understand why the board is blue. I mean, I can't understand what they're going at with the gray and the blue theme, but I don't know, that's just kind of unnecessary to me. Now I must say that I do think the Galaxy Extreme Tuner HD is a very good program. You can set up your profiles, do your overclock settings, change fan speed. There's even a voltage control, which I didn't mess around with. It's just standard overclocking I did for the performance. And this is something interesting. It says Magic BIOS here. They're actually encouraging you to do BIOS flashes, which is fairly rare. I know most other graphics card companies will tell you either flashing your BIOS will void your warranty completely, or if you have to RMA the card, you better put it back to that original BIOS before you do so. Otherwise, the warranty is toast. Now, one of the main purposes for me going into this Extreme Tuner HD was because I really wanted you to hear even on 100%, how this Galaxy's Cards fan really isn't all that loud. 
Okay, you can kind of hear it. I mean, given I've got all these scythe slipstreams running over it, but that's not that loud at 100%. Geez, for the GTX 480, that's like 60%. Let's try it with the side panel off. Again, stack speeds, 100%. Now during the benchmarks it was showing getting into the 4100s for RPMs at 100%. So that gives you an idea of how powerful this fan is. Now I know what you all are aching for, it's the performance results. So okay, let's get on with those. And to give you a description of the ones I did, it was 3D Mark Vantage, 3D Mark 06, the Mafia 2 benchmark, Lost Planet 2, Tests A and B, Heaven 2.1, and then I did Furmark for a little bit of a burn test in order to show you the cooling performance for the Galaxy GTX 465. So to give you an idea of what I did for these benchmarks, what I did was I took the GTX 465, put it in the top slot of my classified motherboard, which is a 16 bandwidth, ran all the benchmarks 100% fan at the stock settings which are 607 for the core 1215 for the shader and 1603 for the memory ran all the benchmarks and then after that I overclocked the card to 725 1450 and 1870 which is a quite impressive overclock for not having touched the voltage a bit I'm sure if I had tweaked the voltage a little bit, I could have raised that up even higher. And then after all those tests were done, I uninstalled drivers, everything like that. And then moved the card down into the 8 slot and repeated exactly the same process. So enjoy those performance results. I was quite impressed by how much you can overclock this card without even touching the voltages. The frame rates for the benchmarks were pretty decent, but as taken as a ratio with the frame rates and also taking into correlation how cool the card stays with the heatsink and also how quiet the fan is, that earns high marks in my gradebook. Now a couple things I really didn't care for with the card. One is the color. Okay. I can kind of understand wanting to separate yourself from the other competitors and having a gray look, but the box is black and blue. The box inside of this is a brilliant black. Why is the card gray? All it does is make the card look, frankly, more like a toy. Like I said, if this sucker was black, even though it is very plasticky, I would be much more forgiving and it would be a much more appealing card to look at as well. And secondly, the board on the card, I have no idea why it's that kind of tinted blue. You know, it should just be black, man. I mean, come on. Give us black or give us a backplate. The fan LED is absolutely beautiful. But again, it would be that much more brilliant if the rest of the card was black. Another thing I didn't like is that they didn't send you power cables along with it. 
they send you a HDMI cable, which is great, but if you don't have enough PCI Express cables free on your power supply, you know, I've got a 1200 watt, so I've got plenty of them, but you guys in the 600, 650, 700 range, you might not have a heck of a lot of PCI Express cables free. So those Molex to power connectors really do come in handy and hopefully you have some laying around if you decide to get this card. Now as a value, this card runs about in the $260 to $280 range and while it does overclock tremendously, the GTX 460 also overclocks very well and is somewhere in the $50 to $80 less range. So value-wise, it's a good card, but it's certainly not great. So based on the performance results, as well as the style and design, and what came with the card, my final verdict is the Galaxy GTX 465 is a recommended decent value B+. Till next video, ladies and gentlemen. Talk later.